Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's Machinery Safety Webinar from PILPS. If somebody could drop me a quick message just to let me know that you can hear me, that'd be perfect. Today we'll be covering emergency stops and the standard EN ISO 13850, and we'll also be touching on a few other associated standards. My name is Mark Staples. I will be your presenter for this webinar session today. My colleagues Jamie Thomas and Jason Reed will be managing the Q&A in the chat room. If you have questions, you can type these using the toolbar to the right hand side of your screen. My co-hosts will try and answer these during or at the end of the webinar. You will automatically receive a link to the GoToStage website where a recording of this webinar and also previous webinars can be played back. You'll also receive an attendance certificate. These slides are available to download during this webinar from the handout section. E-stops are predominantly covered by the harmonized standard EN ISO 13850. This was revised in 2015. So the aim of this webinar is to update you on the changes and additions. We will be referencing two functional safety standards today, ISO 13849, for those of you who choose to go down the performance level route, and 62061, if we prefer to use the safety integrity level route. It's useful to know that the standard 13849 was also updated in 2015. We will be looking into um, standard EN 60204 part one, which was revised in 2018 also. Section 10.7 makes mention of emergency stop devices. <clears throat> Section 10.8 considers emergency switching off devices and their operation functions, which we're gonna look at later on in this session. Standard EN 60947 part five, part five, <clears throat> This had an amendment in 2013, and this is for the manufacture of low voltage switch gear and control gear, which also includes emergency stops. With regards to the machinery directive, as you know, we have now exited from the European Union, and as such, we now have to comply with the Supply of Machine Safety Regulations 2008. The regulations came into force on the 1st of January this year. There is a 12 months grace period though to allow people to get on board with changes, but this window closes on the 31st of December, 2021. To gain compliance with the supply of machine safety regulation, we use designated standards, which have been based upon the previous harmonized standards under the machinery directive. The guide to the machinery directive, version 2.2, this is a really useful guide, it contains over 400 pages covering the machinery directive with clear explanations for guidance and interpretation. So I'd strongly recommend that you uh, download a copy of that. So on to EN 13850 for emergency stop functions. As I mentioned previously, this standard was revised in 2015 and has replaced the previous 2008 version. So it's key to mention that if you follow or reference the 2008 version, then you can no longer claim presumption of conformity to the machinery directive or the supply of machine safety regulations. So you must use and reference the 2015 version. This applies if you're building machines or systems. Emergency stops, the king of the stop buttons. Some basics from section four of EN ISO 13850. The purpose of an emergency stop is to avert actual or impending emergency situations arising from the behavior of persons or from an expected hazardous event. They should be initiated by a single human action. Emergency stops shall be available and operational at all times. So if you have emergency stops and guard switches in the same series loop, the emergency stop is essentially no longer operational and you can no longer have an effect on the machine. Emergency stops shall override all of the functions and operations in all operating modes of the machine without impairing other protective functions. So for example, guard switches may be bypassed to allow for slow speed, machine jogging or setup, but the e-stop must always be 
operational and available to override all other functions. Emergency stops are a requirement under the Provision and Use of Work Equipment uh, Act. So regulation 16 refers to emergency stopping. It asks if they're fitted, does the emergency stop have priority over normal machine stops? Are they correctly identified? Pure is a legal requirement in the UK for all users of work equipment, so it's really important. Emergency stops shall be reset by intentional human action and not initiated a machine start. Emergency stops should be located carefully, maybe in more than one place. Once the emergency stop is twisted and released, this cannot be automatic. This must require a machine reset and then a machine start signal following the reset. Emergency stop actuation needs to be investigated as this should indicate an emergency situation. Resets need to be in sight of where the e-stop was actuated to ensure it is safe to reset and restart the machine. Emergency stop should not introduce further hazards or damage to the machine. And the appropriate manner of stopping is important. This is the stop category. Stopping categories within 13850 and 60204 part one. Stop category zero, immediate removal of power. This is an uncontrolled stop. Direct switch off or disconnection from the motor via contactors, removing the safe torque off signal from a variable speed drive so that the drive no longer delivers power to the motor. Blocking of air or hydraulic supply to pneumatic or hydraulic actuators. This is a new inclusion into the standard, but this should really have always been practiced. We'll mention more about this later. Stop category one, stop initiated, power available until stop achieved. This is a controlled stop. This allows for machine stopping times, time delay stops, deceleration and braking, used with control systems to indicate machinery is stationary. It may be used for fast moving machinery to protect the machine. Could have instant operational contacts along with time delay contacts, and it's achieved using the SS1 function on a variable speed drive. Stop category two is not in the standard 13850, but it is included in 60204 part one. Power is maintained to the actuators, even after machine axes have come to a standstill. This is to be used if a safe position or a datum position is required for position holding could also be used to hold against other forces such as gravity. Some variable speed drives are equipped with a specific SS2 function. Now, moving on to the new requirement relating to the functional safety standards. This new inclusion into EN 13850 refers to the minimum performance level and safety integrity level requirements for an emergency stop. These are a performance level of C, a safety integrity level of one. The graphic on the right hand side is the risk graph from Annex 1 of standard EN 13849 part one. The reason for showing this is because of the introduction of a minimum safety level for e-stops, which is performance level C using 13849 or safety integrity level one using 62061. We will refer to standard 13849 during this webinar as this is most commonly used by manufacturers of machinery rather than 62061, which is mainly for the process industry. The standard also now refers to ISO 4413 and ISO 4414 for hydraulic and pneumatic systems respectively, and not just IO IEC 60204 part one for electrical systems. So let's have a look at a few scenarios and see how we could achieve this minimum performance level of C. In the following slides, you'll see images taken from the PILTS Pascal safety calculator and verification software, which is used for the verification of your safety related control system architectures 
in, in accordance with standard 13849 part two. In this scenario, we have a single channel e-stop directly feeding the coil of a contactor. To achieve performance level C, you will need to use well-tried and tested components. And as you see in column seven, well-tried and tested components have a high mean time to dangerous failure value of 100 years. However, we don't have any feedback from the output contactor. So therefore, the diagnostic coverage in column six is 0%. And with a diagnostic coverage of 0%, the maximum performance level you can achieve is performance level C. A single contact dropping out a contactor may be completely acceptable, but this is based upon the risk assessment and hazard identification to determine the appropriate safety-related control system requirements. In this scenario, we again have a single channel e-stop, but we now have included a safety relay to monitor the e-stop loop. We are still using well-tried and tested components, and we still only have one contactor disconnecting our load. We still do not have any feedback from the contactor, so we still have a diagnostic coverage of 0%. And without diagnostic coverage, we cannot exceed a category one architecture. So the mid maximum performance level we can achieve here is still performance level C. In this scenario, we now have a dual channel e-stop with a PNO ZS4 safety relay. This satisfies a performance level of performance level E for our input and logic functions as the relay has the ability to detect short circuits and contact faults. We can now claim an, a higher level of diagnostic coverage of 99%. However, there is still no feedback from the output contactor. So the diagnostic coverage for the output is 0%. The architecture for the output is category one. So this will pull the performance level requirements down to performance level C. In this scenario, we have series connected e-stops into a safety relay. And as you can see, we can claim 60% diagnostic coverage using this approach, but this architecture still has a single contactor on its output, which has no feedback and offers no diagnostic coverage. So the maximum performance level requirement that we can achieve is still performance level C. There are valid questions with regards to wiring e-stops in series with each other with regards to fault masking. The interlocking standard EN14119 has a technical report, TR24119, that accompanies it. This mentions the possibility of fault masking that should be considered with regards to simultaneous actuation. However, wiring multiple e-stops in series is not as common as with wiring multiple guards and interlocks in series with each other. And as multiple e-stops will be actuated simultaneously, this is not covered within this standard. But you may want to consider if you do have many e-stops in series with each other, that one channel could fail. The safety relay will detect this and won't allow a reset to happen, so it'll stop the machine in a safe manner. But if you e reset the e-stop and trigger another e-stop, this could mask the fault and enable the safety relay to allow a reset and restart of the machine, and the fault will go undetected. In this scenario, we cannot achieve a diagnostic coverage of greater than 60%. So we cannot achieve a performance level requirement higher than performance level C. I have to mention that this is a minimum requirement and a higher performance level could be required, possibly peer performance level D or performance level E, if this is the case, then you should possibly consider your design and whether other protective measures as well as e-stops are required. E-stops are a complementary device and are usually actuated following the occurrence of a hazardous event or situation. An e-stop is an after the event safety device. Location, 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 this really matters. An emergency stop shall be located at each operator control station, except where the risk assessment indicates that this is not necessary. 
at locations as determined by the risk assessment, for example, at the entrance and exit locations, at locations where intervention to the machinery is needed, at all places where a person and machine interaction is expected by design, so loading, unloading zones typically. Emergency stop devices shall be positioned so that they are directly accessible and capable of non-hazardous actuation by the operator and others who need to actuate them. The, the actuator of an emergency stop device intended to be actuated by hand should be mounted between 0.6 metres and 1.7 metres above the access level, for example the floor level or a platform level. Foot pedals should be mounted in a fixed position directly at access level, which is floor level. The positioning of emergency stops shouldn't introduce further hazards by potentially having to reach over other hazards to reach them, and foot pedals should be fixed to the floor to stop them moving around and potentially creating their own hazards, a tripping hazard for example. Moving on to the construction of emergency stops and the principle of direct opening action with mechanical latching. Electrical emergency stop devices shall be manufactured in accordance with IEC 60947 part 5 part 5. The actuator of the emergency stop shall be coloured red. The background behind the actuator shall be coloured yellow. The actuation of the emergency stop contacts should be made through a rigid member which directly affects the contacts. Emergency stop devices requiring a key on the actuator to be disengaged or unlatched should be avoided as these could be a source of injury to the hand of the operator actuating them. When emergency stop devices are installed on detachable or cableless operator control stations, at least one emergency stop device shall be permanently fixed to the machine. There is a discussion regarding using RFID sensors for emergency stop functions, although this is pretty unlikely as most RFID sensors are of a non-contact actuating device and there isn't a physical rigid member that directly affects the contacts. The colouring of them may also not satisfy the standard of being red on a yellow background. Measures shall apply to avoid confusion between active and inactive emergency stop devices, so the device should colour change through illumination of the, emergent, of the active emergency stop, which we'll look at later on. Emergency stops are no longer permitted to have writing on the yellow background, but must display the Euronorm signal for emergency stop. An example of this signal, simple, is at the top right hand side of this slide. Wireless emergency stops could potentially be taken away from the machine. If wireless emergency stops are used, then a hardwired emergency stop must always be available so someone else in the danger zone can, access, can have access to an emergency stop. If the wireless e-stop leaves its operational zone, then this must be indicated via some form of blinking light or changing of colour. We'll talk about this later in this webinar as well. Prevention of unintended actuation. So far as practicable, unintended actuation of the emergency stop device shall be prevented by location rather than the use of other application design measures. Emergency stops should be positioned away from heavily trafficked areas, mounted perhaps on a recessed surface within the machine, but the recess should be big enough for a full hand to actuate the e-stop. The use of a protective shroud around these stops should be avoided. This is mentioned within the standard 13850. Before shrouding an e-stop, you should consider the position of the e-stop and relocate it away <coughs> from heavily trafficked areas, where it could be triggered by accident. Padlocking or an emergency stop in the off state is not an effective method to ensure the machine stays safe and motionless as this could fail. If you wish to isolate the machine then an isolator 
should be used along with lockout, tagout, testout procedures. The red and yellow switch, di switch disconnector displayed here can be used as an emergency stop device. The next slide refers to EN 60204 and section 10.7.4 stipulates the requirement for this. <clears throat> emergency switching off standard EN 60204 part one, section 10.7.4. The supply disconnecting device is sometimes being locally operated to serve the function of emergency stop, but this should be by exception, and normally stop is preferred. It may be locally operated to serve the function of an emergency stop when it is readily accessible to the operator and is of a suitable type. A switch disconnector with or without fuses in accordance with IEC 60947 part three, with a utilization category of AC23B or DC23. This is for heavily inductive loads, such as motors and drives. A disconnector with or without fuses in accordance with IEC 60947 part three, that has an auxiliary contact that in all cases causes switching devices to break the load circuit before the opening of the main contacts of the disconnector or an auxiliary trip, the e-stop, and removes the load before the de heavy demand is placed on the isolator contacts. The disconnector must also be able to withstand the loads and back EMF that will be generated from disconnecting motors from supplies. It shall be red with a yellow background and not black and grey. Black and grey is used for offload isolation and not onload. Black and grey is also to be used following the stopping of the machine and the load dissipated. Now, we will move on to a new topic within the standard. Span of control zones. This is new in section four of ISO 13850. The concept of span of control is now included. Basically, each emergency stop should cover the whole machine unless stopping all machinery would result in additional hazards or it would unnecessarily affect production. Where emergency stops shut down discrete areas, these are called zones. The standard allows for overlapping of these zones and gives guidance on how to assign each zone based on things such as physical layout, visibility, the possibility of recognizing hazards using human sensors, so smell, sight, sound, production effects, exposure to hazards of any adjacent hazards. These spans of control should be chosen with good engineering judgment and emergency stops with different spans of control should not, as far as practicable, be located near each other to avoid confusion. Span of control zones. EN ISO 13850 states that span of control is not preferred for e-stops. But, cert, but details certain requirements which need to be applied. For example, span of control shall be clearly defined and identifiable by the use of pictograms at the operating position of each emergency stop device. So we've got two examples there of pictograms. The example on the left is for an entire machine assembly. And the example on the right shows span of controls for specific sections or locations on that machine assembly. Emergency stop devices shall be readily associated with the hazard requiring emergency stop. This is one reason why active illuminated emergency stops are becoming increasingly popular. Standard changes in EN ISO 13850 and IEC 60204, illumination is now possible. Section 4.3.8 of standard EN 13850, 
When emergency stop devices are installed on detachable or cableless operator control systems, for example, pluggable, portable, or teaching pendants, at least one emergency stop device shall be permanently available in a fixed position on the machine. In addition, at least one of the following measures shall be applied to avoid confusion between active and inactive emergency stop devices. Device color changing through elimination of the active emergency stop device. Section 10.4 of standard IEC 60204 part one, illuminated push buttons. Illuminated push button actuators shall be color coded in accordance with section 10.2.1, where these are where there is difficulty in assigning an appropriate color, white shall be used. The color of an active emergency stop actuator shall remain red regardless of the state of illumination. This means you do not flash the red part. ENISO 13850 emergency stop devices shall be readily associated with the hazard requiring an emergency stop. So how do we address this? And are there products out there that can help us? There sure is. This is PIT E-Stop Active, achieving performance level E for emergency stops with a performance level D for active illumination. It complies with EN 13850 and IEC 60204 part one. It indicates being active and inactive through illumination. It's gray when inactive. This is when the machine zone is powered down and not in use. Gray means it is no longer an active emergency stop. A bright red, yellow, solid illumination. This is for when the machine zone is powered up and the e-stop channels are healthy. This is demonstrated in the picture in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. So you can see red and gray. If the bright yellow ring is flashing, this is when the e-stop has been activated or when the pit e-stop has detected an illumination failure. To reset, you twist the red operator clockwise or anti-clockwise. And to find out more about pit e-stop, there's a link at the bottom of this slide. To guarantee the illumination is healthy, the illumination must have a performance level rating. And we'll look at this in more detail on the next slide. Safety function one, classic emergency stop function up to performance level E, channels one and two. Safety function two, identi identification of emergency stop up to performance level D of the LED safety module. If the internal LEDs were to fail, one of the two safety contacts would, uh, channels would trip, bringing about a fail-safe e-stop that meets performance level D. Internally, power is taken from channel one. The DC converter is there to smooth out any test pulses from safety relays and also to illuminate the LED. This holds closed the two contacts labeled A, if the LED fails, then current monitoring opens up the two contacts label, labeled A, and these contacts are force guided contacts and therefore actuates the emergency stop via channel one. This gives the performance level rating of D. Finally, we will move on to EN60947, part five, part five, and latching. Why an e-stop must latch and cannot be designated until twisted, uh, sorry, cannot be disengaged until twisted and released. The standard says EN60947 part five, part five, when an emergency stop signal is generated by actuation of an emergency stop device, the emergency stop function shall be maintained by latching of the actuating system. The emergency stop function shall be maintained until the emergency stop device is reset, disengaged. It shall not be possible for the emergency stop device 
to latch in without generating the emergency stop signal. This is critical. If it can latch in without generating the emergency stop signal, this could result in the loss of the safety function because the contacts haven't been actuated. If the emergency stop device does fail, generation of the emergency stop signal takes priority over the latching function. The contacts must change state if the button is latched in. The button cannot stay in without the contacts changing state. This was referred to in the previous emergency stop standard, EN418, as trigger action, which latches and changes the contact state in the, at the same time. Now, as a point of interest, what is the correct failure mode of an emergency stop? If the emergency stop is triggered and the contacts change but the operator does not latch, the contacts have to open and trigger a machine stop. Although this is not desirable, this is the preferred failure mode of an emergency stop. So that puts a stop to today's webinar on the standard EN13850 for emergency stop devices. So thank you for attending our webinar today. We hope you found it useful and insightful. And to keep you updated on upcoming webinars from Pilts Automation, we have Packaging Machine Safety on the 25th of June, EN ISO 13855 and Safe Distances on the 30th of July, Understanding Pure on the 27th of August, CE and UK CA Marking for Machinery on the 24th of September, and safe operating mode selection on machines on the 29th of October. You can register for all of these webinars on the, web, on the website address above. And thank you again for your attendance.